Welcome back. I'm Pete, and you're watching the Custom Guard Channel. But we're gonna work out a Bobcat today. And it's gonna be awesome. Since this one's a Silverado, maybe you guys could just call me the, the Silverado Man. All right, guys, it's time to get to work. Uh, I got a 2011 uh, Ford Fusion. Uh, it's got, I diagnosed the left front wheel bearing is out. Uh, you're asking me, how do I know this? Well, if you're driving it and you turn to the right, the noise gets louder. So that's what I'm saying. I, I didn't listen to a stethoscope. So, all right, guys, uh, we're going to find out what it takes to change this wheel bearing. I think she's a, a Preston one. <laughs> I don't know if I said, but she's got 155,000 miles. If not, I'll take this out. Well, anyways, I don't have no uh, hub tamer, so we're going to have to use the press. All right, we need to get the, the brake caliper off. And it's got a bracket. It looks like a 15. caliper hook figure out where we're gonna put it looks like right there uh so now I'll just give her a little bit of pride to loosen it out just like that and we'll just set that to the side on the hook She's kind of hooked up. She's kind of hooked in there now. So next, uh, I think we'll take the brake rotor off. Just gonna try the impact. Let me get a different socket. Let's give a give her a little tap right here and right here. That's one. There, got it. Now, if we just tap on this a little bit. That. Well, it looks like we got to take off the brake line, upper ball joint, the tie rod in, and this car has a couple lower ball joints. That's kind of weird. Axle feels stuck. It might be. All right, let's get some of this other stuff loose here. All right, so that 
takes care of the brake line. Oh, that looks like an 18, doesn't it? I think it might be a 17. Right, just screw that on there with our fingers. We're going to give her a tap right there. Ah, got it. I had to hit it a couple times. Well, you guys weren't even watching. It's right up here. I just tap it. Right there. Okay. Tie rod. Has a cotter key. Yeah, it's loose enough I can pull it out. It's kind of rusty looking. I think I'll, I'll put a new one back in it. Alright, let's take that off. Must be a 17 also. You know, I'm going to wire brush that a little bit. Oh, let's hit it with the impact. Problemo. We'll hit that one too. I finally got it. I see. So it when you turn, it moves the strut. That's the weirdest. I, I don't even know if I should say, but I have my opinion. I'm just going to keep it to myself. Alright, let's pop these two lower ones loose. Loosen that axle. We'll get this over to the press. O'Reilly's is bringing me out a wheel bearing. And they said they'd bring it to me. Today's Saturday. So, we'll see what happens. These nuts down here are a 23. That's really weird. I have a funny feeling them are going to come apart hard. Uh, I'm going to get the air compressor going and we're going to put the air hammer on here in a minute. Yeah, let's see if we if this axle will come loose. Alright, it came a little loose. It, it was in there. It's, it's still in there, but that's good enough. So we need to knock these lower ball joints now. I think I'll run the nut so it's flush. So what I'll do is I'll take my air hammer and I'll hit on the bottom. Yeah, they both moved. I'm not sure. This kind of looks like they're press fit. I think I'll change bits again and push, put the smaller bit in there. There's one out. Yeah, they're kind of a press fit deal. two out. 
That's kind of simple. Let's get this out of here. We're going to have to do one more thing and get that the ABS sensor wire out of there. Yeah, it's out. Good call, man. You hear that? Yeah, that's that's really bad. Um You know if I'm lucky, looks like it goes up here under the fender weld, so looks like if I'm lucky, I could take this bolt out and just pull the sensor out. I'm gonna try it. We want to be careful, we don't want to break it. That's a 10 millimeter. Yeah, that bolt's kind of rusted. It does look like we got to take that sensor out to change the wheel bearing. I didn't order a new sensor, I hope I don't break it. Yeah, back to the ratchets. I decided that, like, this Craftsman is one of my favorites, too. Uh, it is a China made. And it works really good and it's really comfortable on my hand. Um. I, the only thing I would say, sometimes I have to like turn it a little bit, yeah, to move the direction. I gotta get a light. I got it. The bolt. I got it off. Uh, it comes off really easily. And we do not have to take it off to change the wheel bearing other than it's connected to the... To the this, it's connected to the knuckle. So we, I'm taking that off because that's easier. Now we'll get this nut off. And it's not loose enough. I'm still using the iron cubes. Kind of like them. I thought that you got this loose enough, didn't you? To get off of your fingers. That's what you said. She still wants to stick in that axle just a little bit. She is. Alright, let's see what we got to do to press this out of there. So the first thing we want to do is press out the hub. It looks like I should have got a longer socket. We'll be alright. And usually the hubs don't press out very hard because a lot of guys will knock them out with a slide hammer. But this one is. Let me see. I say we keep going. Let's see. Sometimes you just got to do it. I'm going to let off a little bit. Move it. So, getting this race off might be a little problem, but we'll get it. There's part of the bearing on there, too. 
uh, you can order it, get this part too, but save must the customer some money. We'll we'll reuse it. This looks like our snap ring is on this side. I think we'll wire brush that so I can see what I'm doing. should be good enough. So we'll get a little um, chisel. We'll knock that loose. I have had these where I've had to fight them for hours. I think we'll just go around it. I can hear a change in the tone. Maybe it's bending that ear. No, I think it's coming loose. It's definitely coming loose. So, just want to be careful and I don't want to get hurt or lose it. So I think now that we got it there, we'll, we'll just work it out of there. Alright, I think that's pretty good. We'll just hit it with the hammer right here. Not yet. Not yet. There we go. So, pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up really nicely with a wire brush. I think that's looking pretty good. So the easiest thing to do next is we should have something round here. That fits on the outside, that would be the best. I don't know if I'm going to have something, but I'm going to look. Alright guys, uh, I did get the race off the, the hub. I just ground some notches in it. I did have to heat it up a little bit. My, I just have a jeweler torch. It came right off. Alright, next for this one. And these are gonna. This is going to press off hard. So I, I got like a quarter inch I could go. And then I'm, I'm going to use this. It's an old... Uh, race I've saved. But for right now, to break it loose, we're going to have to put a lot of pressure on it. Is this socket... I should move the table up, but I don't want to. Let's get her centered up good. Alright. It's either going to come apart or something's going to break. Yeah, that was tight. Yeah, we've only moved it like an eighth of an inch. I could go a little more. Get another pop out of it. Or maybe not. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that last time I did move it. So now we'll put this on here. And that's going to be a tight squeeze, I think, but we'll make it.
All right, that might be it. I don't know. Once they pop, though, they'll they'll come easier. No, it's still going. Oh, there it stopped, I think. I can hammer it out now. Yep, that's all the farther that's going to let us go. So next, I'm going to clean this out with a wire brush, get a little scotch brite, and then uh, we'll get ready to go back in. Back in, I think it'll go pretty easy. Alright, so I got it all cleaned up. You're going to want to put it. Yeah, it's only easy if it'll go on here. Alright guys, so I found everything I need. I haven't opened this yet to see if it's the right one. But I got the motor craft, and it's a BRG-3 1X. Oh, here's, that's, the Ford number is a 3M8Z-1215-A. I'm going to have to open it up to see if it's the right one. So I'm going to go cut it really nicely, in case I got to send it back. Looks good enough to me. Okay, so what we want to do, and I, I figured this out right after I shut the camera off. I'm going to use that bearing race again that I was using, and that sits right on the flat. Just like that, and we're going to want to put some oil. I don't know, I don't think other people do this, or maybe somebody does, but this is what I do. And this will help us go in. I guess I've pressed a lot of these. At the job I used to work at, we had like a hub tamer. That worked pretty good too. So now, set that on there. Maybe we'll give her a little tap. Just to get her set in there. Something like that. That'll be good. I'm gonna line this all back up again. And now we want to press on the outside of this race. That'll work. But we need a plate. So. This is my pop can crusher. Let's just see what happens. All right, it's going in. Just making some music. I think that was it. It looks like it is. It looks like I got enough room to get the snap ring in. Okay. I'm done messing around. That's the ticket, you just use a hammer. 
Next, we'll make sure this is locked in. I think we're really good. So next, we want to find something. Yep, that'll work. We'll go right on that one. So we want to hold on that inner race. I'll go ahead and I'll put a little oil on this one. A little oil on here. It looks like I could press right on that. So just like that. I'll make sure everything is centered up really nicely, perfectly actually. Right, I'm just going to put a little pressure down on it. And then I'm going to use my light. Not too bad, but i got to move something. That little bearing race we put in the middle, it's not in the middle anymore. I don't even need it in there. I'm going to take it out. I think somewhere right in there. I want to shift her over a little bit. Right there. Alright, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and press that all the way down in. And we got our snap ring in there, we didn't forget. Alright, that last pop was it. Oh yeah, real nice. Perfect, let's put it back together. Alright guys, let's get this done. So I think this axle really came out hard. I'm just going to put a little Never Seize on here. Hopefully I don't get this all over myself. Make it nicer next time. Of course there won't be a next time after I work on it because this will go another 155,000 miles and the car probably won't make it that long. Alright, that's pretty nice. I think we got started in the axle. Down onto the lowers. Let's get this nut on there and then it'll stay. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten that one up. There's 35 foot pounds for this one, it says. Alright, let's get that ABS sensor back on there. Alright, it must be this bolt. Alright, that's good. I think let's put this tie rod on so we can get this stuff torqued. Alright, let's try to torque that now. 35 foot pounds. This one is 35. I think like 40 feels better than me. Yeah, that feels better. Alright, 
We'll call that. So I'm going 40. So that's 35. I got the right from Ford. All right, we can put in this this bolt. Need to get that axle through there a little bit more. And I think we'll just clamp a vice grip on the end. I'll just tap on this. It might be enough. Let me just see if it'll pull it through. Yep, she is. 180 foot pounds for this one. It's almost to where it was. Let's torque it to where it was. Right there is where it was. It's got a little peen mark on it. Next, let's try to get these lower ones down in there. Might be enough to get that nut started on the one. Not yet. I should just barely start. Let's do the same thing. Right, let's keep the other one on there. That's, this is kind of a ridiculous setup. So for this one, I think I'm going to use my pry bar. Gonna put some downward pressure on it. I give her a look. I'm gonna get a bigger pry bar. All right, I think it was a little crooked. Right, I think there's enough now to get the nut on there. Just barely. I wonder if that's gonna catch the thread. It did not. We gotta go a little bit more, and hopefully, I didn't damage the threads. That's gotta be good enough. Still screws on there. All right, she's going now. Let's run them up with the impact. All right, 148 for those. I got the torque wrench already set up. Okay, we're almost done. Oh, we got a new cotter key. I'll snip that off. Let's get this brake rotor back on there. It's clean enough. We will put some fluid film on there. Zap these bolts back in. Uh, I don't see no uh, Loctite on these and the torque is uh, 66 to 70 depending upon where you look. Alright, uh, we better torque this one. Alright, we'll knock that back down. A little more. There we go. Now we're ready for the wheel, and that's 95 foot pounds.
All right, guys, uh, I'm going to let her down. I wasn't going to videotape this with this round of the wheel bearing, but I'm just going to put it in here. So it's got a P0128 as uh, thermostat rationality. Uh, I, I, I put the scanner on it, and I watched the temperature, and it's it's not getting up there. So I think every time I run across a P0128, it always is a thermostat. So we're going to swap that out. I got the Motocraft thermostat, too. So the number on that, I don't think you can read that, is a 3M4Z-8575-B. As soon as we get it down, I'm going to torque that. All right, let's see what we got underneath the hood. I haven't looked at it yet. Kind of looks like I'm in for a treat on this one. Well, it's over here. I think I can handle it. Let's see if we get these clamps off. Not with that pliers. So the thermostat's right down here. So I can't grip it very well. I think I'm going to try to pull on the bottom and pull it upwards. I still can't. So since it wants to be like that, I think I'll use my channel locks. I got the upper one off. I think I'm going to have to hose pick that. Let's see if I can twist it off. I got that one. This other one. Let's see if I can rotate that clamp. I can't rotate the clamp. These clamps are very stubborn. I got that clamp off. I'm going to try to use a pry bar. All right, that worked. All right, now we just got to get out whatever bolts are in there. I'm going to go get the little electric ratchet. I don't know how many I can get to, but I can get to this one. I need just the smallest extension. Well, there's two. I don't know how many more. There we go. She's coming out of there. It's probably going on the floor. It's got Motorcraft green. So we got the new one, and we got a third bolt. It's way down in the bottom corner. Let's see if I can sneak to that one. And I sure can. There she is. I don't see nothing physically wrong. So we're just going to put the new one in. I'm going to clean that up just a little bit with some scotch Brite. Right, that looks clean enough to me. I'm going to put a film of Sil Glide on the seal. Alright, that should work. Let's get this thing bolted back in there. And we'll start with this top bolt. Yeah, it's orientated. Hey, you can't change the orientation because of this little notch. Alright, I'm going to snug them up. Now I'm going to do a final torque by hand. 
That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. So just about as tight as you can get with three fingers. Hold on and ratchet like that. We'll get these hoses back on. Putting the top one on first. Very nice. Alright, so I'm back exactly how it was. And move this one a little bit. That looks real good to me. Alright, next I'll transfer that antifreeze into a jug and we're going to reuse it. So I'm going to strain it out. I'll be right back. I'm not going to use the vacuum bleeder. We're just going to pour it in. Alright guys, uh, I think we're going to have to start it up to get the rest of the antifreeze in, so I'm going to back it up a little bit, start it up, back it up a little bit, and uh, I'll turn the heater on hot and on high. Might have gotten a little water and cooling on the boat, but trust me, it's going to be just fine. I'm going to go rev it up a little bit. I don't want to get out the vacuum bleeder, but it's kind of looking that way. Oh, there she goes down. I'll get it. We got this much coolant to put back in. All right, guys, I'm going to work with this a little bit. I'll come back on when I got it. All right, guys, uh, I got all the coolant in. I got some heat. So I think we're ready to go for a ride. All right, guys, we will have to clear the codes. I never cleared them. So let's uh, let's just read them, and we got some heat coming. I'll verify that the antifreeze is full when we get back from our test drive. Looks like she's zippy zapping today. Well, as soon as I say that, then it slows down. We should pick up a code in the PCM. Yeah, it hasn't got to it yet. Yeah, there's a code in there, so that's going to be the P0128. We'll go in there and see. Okay, let's just hit this. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's P0128, so let's clear these off. So I'll just hit clear. And then we'll go in there and pull up some data. I don't know if it, did, it didn't clear off. Oh, so it's P0... P1000, and that means we just cleared it. All the readiness monitors, we just wiped them all the monitors. So let's go into the PCM, which I was just there. Let's enter there. And we're going on a little drive and I'll ver when we get back I'll verify the coolant level and I'm, I'm going to retorque that wheel. Uh, usually the steel wheels I do pretty good, but since we had her all apart I'll retorque it. Yeah, so she, she read them kind of fast, but now she's poking. Uh, we want to read the data stream. Yeah, the scanner, the scanner's just been kind of goofy today. It took me three times to get it to communicate with this car. So, I don't know what's going on. Um, let's just select, or let's, yeah, let's just find the engine temperature. So I wonder if that's in the ease. Cooling fan operation, we can watch that. Maybe that's how they measure the coolant on this one, it's the head temperature. Alright, let's see what that says. 
So we're running at 208.4 degrees. Cooling fan operation is no error. Well, this must be the blower fan. No. Oh, the engine fan must be uh, pulse within right now. Pulse with management, PWM, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Alright, let's go on a little drive. We're going to make it. I got the van out. You'll see. Yep, there she is. I'm driving the van. It's a 1979 Chevy van. It's got a 5.7. And it's a 4-bolt main because I had to pay it off. Uh, that's a story for another day. She runs really nicely. And that's my new daily driver for now. I'm not going to drive the pickup unless it's for work. And as you guys noticed, I don't drive the Jeep either. Alright, let's go for a ride. We need to verify the wheel bearing. And it wants me to put my seatbelt on. My van don't ding at me. There you go. Got the seatbelt on. We got good heat. And we're running a little bit cooler now. 206.6. I think we're gonna take a left here. I can tell you right now, I, I don't hear the wheel bearing before I could hear it. Pretty evident. Alright, we can go now. You guys probably can't see any of the scanner anyways. I'll just read it out to you. Well, let's see if we can graph this. Yeah, so there we go. We're going to graph it so we can see if she dips down too much or... You know, I'd say anything above 190 I'm happy with. Usually they run around 190 to 200 and something. We got really good heat. So that that's one of the ways you can find if you got to bled out is once you start getting heat. You don't... If you ain't got no heat, you want to shut it off. You don't want to run it very long. It means there's no, not enough antifreeze in there to flow. So, yeah, the, the wheel bearings fix this thing. is nice and quiet. Nothing's wrong with the alignment. She's nice. Uh, I think the wind is blowing a little bit today, but maybe not. Yeah, she's driving herself. Hands-free. They made these cars back in 2011. They did that. I'm just kidding. I think that's that's not right. Yep, yep, we got her. Yes, this car goes right down the road really nicely. I brought the torque wrench with me. Yeah, see, that way when I get back, I can park the car in its parking spot and finish it right there, and then call the customer. I'll have to. I'll have to walk back in, get the torque wrench, all that, all that goodies. Efficiency. So here's our graph. I'll probably show you that better when we get back. Uh, that's a nice and steady graph. Oh, right, guys, there, there's the graph. Uh, she's straight across. Uh, we got her fixed now. All right, guys. Uh, there you have it. Uh. So if you need to do a wheel bearing on one of these, you're probably going to need a press or a hub tamer or something like that. Uh, I don't know, maybe you could rig something up with a bottle jack. But anyways, uh, and we did the thermostat. The thermostat was really easy. Anybody can handle that. So that's it. that's always nice to know. And I didn't use the vacuum bleeder. I just, uh, you know, kept starting it up with short periods. I had squeezed the hose a little bit and take the cap off. Uh, the air would come out. It's, I'd just repeat that procedure until I got the heat. Once I got the heat, I, I was home free, so thanks for watching, and you can catch me next time.